Welcome back to Jack's Tech Corner. I again am your host Jack and this is yet another Windows Server 2008 video tutorial. Now this video is going to also include or you can also use uh, what I'm about to teach you here in Windows Server 2003. It's going to work backwards for you also. And what we're going to talk about today is the importance of DNS or domain name services. Now when I first got uh, into the computer business DNS really wasn't even uh, a talked about subject at that time. You know we used on our servers we used a, a product called WINS which is still available today and WINS is just a uh, Windows naming convention. It's a way of uh, naming computers based on uh, Windows names or uh, now we call them machine names but that's how WINS worked. But now, ever since the, uh, the adoption of Windows 2000 server, we rely very heavily on DNS. DNS originally started out basically just for the internet, right? The domain name services, just like if you have a domain name, uh, just like mine, jackstechcorner.com, that's a domain name, and that is basically the name on the internet, which goes to an IP address. So it's a naming uh, conversion. You know, it's easier for us uh, to remember names than it is for a number. Uh, try to think of what the IP address is for something such as uh, Disney.com. You probably don't know and you don't even care because on the back end of a DNS server somewhere it's taking care of that uh, transition for you, that transaction. You type in Disney.com, uh, it goes to an IP address which finds a server on the internet. And what they've done now was said, boy, that's pretty important. If we can take that same concept and now put it into your network, um, it would make more sense. It keeps everything more even. And, and I believe that's true. Uh, it makes it an easier way to run a network. And it's very efficient and it's very fast. There are some problems where people run into uh, ever since Windows 2000 server that I look at uh, as a network administrator. And I think, well, it's uh, really interesting to see people make this mistake uh, but early on I mean I've even uh, made it when I first started with Windows 2000 server because I was an old Windows NT guy and I was more of a wins uh, type of a man so we used wins but what I'm telling you here is all your computers should point back to your DNS server now what I mean here if I go into properties here I think we can go into here and show you this we'll go to our network adapter change network adapter settings and here we are on the server we're on the Windows 2008 server I'm going to right click and go to properties here and what I mean by on this IP4 right here okay you can see where the server itself already set this up any computer on your network you want it to point back to your primary DNS server that's very very important if you have any computers in your network right now and your logons are taking 10 15 minutes and it's driving you absolutely crazy uh, it's making your users look at you as less of a technologist and more of a uh, pastry chef then you probably need to pay attention to this the preferred DNS server this should always be the IP address of your primary domain controller as long as that's where your DNS resides because remember you can have multiple servers you can even have tons of virtual servers running and have one just doing DNS um, if it's a rather large network maybe you need I mean large network folks I mean 20 you know 2500 computers maybe you want one computer doing all the uh, DNS handling for the day um, on our network we're running uh, just about 800 computers so we use everything on our primary domain controller. Everything runs through DNS on there, and, and it works just fine. We don't have any problems at all. So every computer in your network, the preferred or the primary DNS server will be the address to your domain controller where your DNS is residing, whatever server that may be on. The alternate, this could be pretty much, uh, maybe you have another DNS server. Some uh, organizations use two DNS servers in your network in case the first one goes down. Uh, and this is very critical and I'm going to show you in a minute why uh, but you want each person to be able to find the computer or resources on your network very rapidly uh, if you're not setting these DNS servers up right that's not going to happen uh, you're going to find people out there and it's going to take them quite a long time to find the resources on your network and it's going to be very irritating to them again you fall into that realm of um, not being a technologist 
of maybe being the uh, company cleaner. Uh, and not being a cleaner or a pastry chef is bad by any means, but if you're a technologist, you want to be known for your technology abilities, not for any other ability that you may possess. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's why I'm bringing that up. Uh, all these other professions are fine, but I want you to be known as a technologist. So the alternate DNS server can be either that, it can be that, or I tell you what, we use a uh, company on the internet called OpenDNS. If you want to fall back, uh, pretty good uh, overall web filter, uh, at least to uh, filter out pornography out of your network, use OpenDNS. Set that up, and uh, we can look at that if you email me, and a few of you have an interest, I'll show you how to set OpenDNS up. So you can use as your fallback uh, web filter uh, for pornography in case your filter should break. But at the very least, it's a very rapid uh, DNS uh, to find internet domain names. So that way all your users can punch through, uh, not be hitting your DNS server all day looking for uh, the Disney.com or the uh, United Streaming if you're in a school or whatever. Uh, so there's that's the tidbit of information I have for you there. So let's go ahead and cancel this out. Um, oh, by the way, if you're not familiar, the 127, this is actually called a loopback address. It's the only time you see a 127 address. It's 127.0.0.1. Loopback means this server set this DNS server up knowing that the DNS resides on this server. So it's a loopback. It's looping right back into itself. So hopefully you uh, understand that and that's a little bit of information for you. Let's go ahead and open up DNS. Now, DNS is the uh, domain name services. As you can see, here's the name of our DNS here. It's called Home Server. If we click this pull-down menu, there is a forward lookup zone. In other words, you're looking it up forward. Forward is always you're giving it a name, and it will figure out the number for you. The reverse lookup zone, which you see I don't have any set up, reverse is just the opposite. You give it a number, it can give you a name. So it's kind of like a trace route in reverse, right? It's a trace route. You, you type in the IP address, and it will give you the name of that computer. This is very nice um, if you have a, say you have a web filter on your system, a content filter, and it's looking at IP addresses all day. You want to find out who uh, belongs to a certain IP address. Maybe uh, they're looking up something you shouldn't be looking up. You can actually uh, do a trace route to a number, and if you have these set up, these reverse DNS, it will actually figure out the name uh, for you. The forward DNS is the primary uh, meat and potato. Here's our home.net server right here. So that's our primary uh, our primary zone is what that's called. It's a DNS. This is a zone, right? Look up zones, home.net. All right. Don't mean to be boring you here. This is very important stuff to get a hold of, uh, to get a handle on, especially if you're going to be the network administrator running this uh, Windows 2008 server or 2000 uh, or 2003 server for that. all that matters. Now here's why it's very important. If we go anywhere on our network and we would type in uh, home server, okay, we would type in home server, we want the computer on that network to be able to find that home server. If your DNS is set properly on that computer, in other words, if you're setting it up to the DNS server, it's going to come right into here and look and say, hey, that computer is at 192.168.1.76. It's very, very important. On that same note, um, what happens here, every time a computer logs onto your network, once that DNS is set properly, it will create a record in here for you. It will give you the name and it will give you the IP address. Um, I could show you our working one uh, from our network, but it's not a great idea to post uh, your information of your actual servers onto the internet. I see a lot of people do that and then you, that's not, security wise, it's not the best thing to do in the world. I would say uh, not to bother doing that. Uh, so for demonstration purposes, I'll just show you how this works. What I'm going to show you now is, let's say, for instance, well, I'll give you one. We did hook up a NAS, a network attached storage device on our network. It's a one terabyte NAS, which is nothing today. It was uh, five years ago when I bought that thing. I mean, now we have a we have a uh, a basic um, network uh, storage device now that was like 3.6 terabytes, and we have people out there buying them. It's 20 terabytes. So, um, you know, the bigger the network, the bigger the storage, folks. You know how that works. 
So anyway, we, we have a box. It's called a NAS. And we want to make sure that we can find that NAS on the, ser on the network. Uh, so when our uh, technologists are out there working, they want to be able to type in a name because they don't want to remember the IP address. If you're in here, just right click and go to new host or a record right here. Now it's going to ask you for that a record or the name of that device. Um, let's just type in NAS. Then it's going to ask you the IP address for that device. Let's say it's at 192.168. I don't know 1.100. Let's just say that. You can also create the assorted uh, create the associated pointer record. We'll go ahead and do that. Go ahead and create a host. Okay, it says the pointer record cannot be created, probably because the reference reverse lookup zone could not be found. So no, I didn't set that reverse lookup zone. That's what that's telling us. But now right here, if you see it, NAS. So now anywhere on my network, I can type in NAS and it should give me that IP address. And that's exactly what we're going to look at to see if that is the case. Type in command. And then if you would do, hopefully you can see this okay in this video. If you would do a trace route, NAS, there you go. You can see right there it gave it to me in a matter of a second. 192.168.1.100. It knows exactly where to go to find NAS dot because now it's making this a subdomain basically uh, because now your network is no more than a DNS server just like it would be on the internet nas.home.net so that is the primary goal I am going to delete this because uh, there is no such thing on my network here at the uh, at home so uh, we don't need that but um, that is exactly how DNS works uh, you can't have uh, you can you can have multiple DNS servers running on your network. Um, there's one thing you can't have. You cannot have multiple DHCP servers running on one network. If you want to cause a bunch of headaches for yourself, go ahead and fire up two or three servers and load DHCP and let them all hand out addresses all day. Um, if you want to lose sleep at night wondering why your network is crashing, why you're getting IP conflicts, go at it and have a good time with it. Um, and we will talk. I'm going to try to set up DHCP on here so I can show you how to do that, how to reserve addresses. It's very critical you know how to do that also. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on DNS management uh, with the Windows 2008 server. Until next time, remember, I am your host, Jack. This is Jack's Tech Corner. Uh, if you enjoy these videos and if you're learning, um, if you want to uh, slide a donation over to the shows, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. It helps to run the software and to uh, produce these shows for you. Um, please subscribe to the shows. Thank you very much for coming, and I will see you next time back here on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.